walking. So it's something that all of us do every day, whether it's just to get from here to there, or we go for a walk with the dog, or we're walking around the grocery store, or we're starting a walking program, or it's a walking program that we've been doing for a long time, whether it's for relaxation or for fitness, to stay healthy, etc. But walking is, is something that we all need to be able to do during the day. It's important to understand how the body needs to work when we're walking. There's many different parts of your body that work together when you are walking. It's not just your feet, it's not just your legs, it's both of your legs, it's your hips, it's your pelvis, it's your trunk, it's your, your low back, it's your upper back, etc. There's a lot of things that go into making sure that you are able to walk normally and walk normally without pain, without difficulty, without discomfort, etc. We really kind of break down walking into two major components. The work that comes from your legs and the work that comes from your trunk. So let's talk about the work that comes from your legs first. Well, for starters, when you're walking, you put one foot on the ground, that's your base of support, while your other leg swings and gets out in front of you to eventually hit the ground and propel you to take that next step forward. So there's a lot of things in that leg, in both of those legs, there's a lot of things that are happening at your foot and ankle, at your hip, at your knee, and all of those things have to happen in tandem with one another. Very commonly what we see in somebody that's having problems when they walk, whether it's pain when they walk, pain after they walk, difficulty with walking, um, discomfort with walking, lack of balance when they're standing or walking, etc., is that some part of that leg isn't working in tandem with other parts. So let's use as an example. If I have tight muscles in my leg, for example in my hamstring, in the back of my leg, what that's going to do is it's going to make it difficult for me to take a full step when I walk. So my step is going to be a little bit shorter. If you've ever been really tight in the back of your legs and you notice when you first stand up your first couple of steps are shorter than others, that's a sign that your hamstrings are tight. And and so what's happening is that short step length is putting more stress someplace else. My inability to get my foot out in front of me to the normal distance means that I have to bend my ankle more to make up for that. What does that do? That puts more stress on my Achilles tendon, puts more pressure on the bottom of my heel. It can lead to things like Achilles tendonitis or plantar fasciitis, heel pain. It also causes me to hyperextend my knee more. You may not actually see the hyperextension, but it puts a lot of extra stress on the back of the knee. That's going to cause the potential for meniscus problems, the potential for um, arthritis setting in or arthritis getting worse, knee pain, patellofemoral problems, all kinds of things. It's also going to cause me to have to bend forward at my trunk to propel myself forward a little bit more. What's that going to do? It's going to put more stress on my low back, potentially irritate a back problem or cause a back problem. Take a back problem that's just been muscular and turn it into something that's disc related. Start to give me some nerve problems, some pinch nerve problems, etc. Now, if we're talking about the other half of what we're looking at when you're walking, it's your posture. When you walk, you need to be perfectly upright. Your spine needs to be straight up and down in a forward and backwards direction and a side to side direction. To a trained eye, like a physical therapist, what a lot of times what we'll see is this slight shifting side to side as you walk. As you walk and you're standing on that leg, your trunk shifts over to the side. And we're talking about just a small amount of shift, even less than what I'm doing as I'm standing here now. But that smallest amount of shift creates a shearing force on the discs in the spine and over time can be a contributor to somebody with back problems. It's the number one reason why people with back problems have more back pain when they're standing and moving is because as they're standing and taking that step, they shift over, they're getting this shearing force in the spine, it's creating more pressure on the disc, ultimately more inflammation, more pain, more symptoms, etc. So your posture, how you stand, how your trunk is positioned, whether it's forward and or to the side is very important when we're looking at somebody's walking. As we walk, our leg muscles tend to get tired and fatigued. Now in some of us that could happen after walking 20 feet, in others of us it could be after walking 20 minutes, and in others it could be after walking an hour or two. But nonetheless, when your leg muscles start to fatigue, mostly your hip muscles, your outer hip muscles, and your back hip muscles, your glutes and your abductors, when those muscles start to fatigue, your body's going to start to bend forward just the slightest little bit. So if you've ever been walking for a period of time and you notice that you're starting to lean forward, that's a sign that those hip muscles are starting to get tired, they're fatigued. And as they are tired and fatigued, your body's compensating, and again, that will set you up for the potential for back problems. More importantly, it throws you off your center of gravity. It increases your risk to just trip over your toes. You can be a healthy person with no balance problems, but you can start to trip over your toes more towards the end of a walk because your center of gravity is thrown off a little bit just because of some fatigue in those hip muscles. If you're thinking about starting a walking program or you're currently doing a walking program or if you have any problems with walking, whether it's pain, difficulty with walking, I can't walk that long, whatever it might be, that's really where a trained eye comes in. Somebody needs to assess your gait because we've got to look at specific pieces what's happening at all of those parts of that chain and make sure that things get addressed 
Because if you've ever heard the saying, no pain, no gain, or a little bit of pain is okay, any of those statements are completely untrue. Pain is your warning sign, difficulty is your warning sign, fatigue is your warning sign that something isn't working properly when you go to do that activity, and in this case, walking. And if that continues, that's what leads to things like Achilles tendonitis and Achilles ruptures, plantar fasciitis or heel pain, knee pain or patellofemoral pain, arthritis in your hip, your knee, your back, disc problems, um, bursitis, iliotibial band problems, all of those things come from the fact that mechanically your gait is not the way that it should be and one joint is overworking or overstressing another. You really need to keep in mind that problems can be prevented and number two, if you're already having problems when you're walking, again even if it's for 20 feet or for two hours, problems can be treated, addressed and corrected so that your gait is normal, we get you walking, you're able to use it for a healthy lifestyle, keeping yourself happy and active and doing the things you want to do, but being able to do it without pain and or the possibility of future problems developing.